Okay, so I'm going to ask my AI agent what health risks are associated with my BMI. So what you're looking at is a N8N workflow that uses a multi-agent design pattern with RAG to query my personal medical data from Apple Health and my lab data from LabCorp and answer my medical questions. And now we have a response. This is based on your most recent measurements. Your BMI is calculated to 25.5, plays you in the overweight category according to WHO. Provide me a trend of my liver enzymes. This health assistant agent is going to go to our medical expert agent. And it's probably going to ask something like, if I had to guess, you know, what are liver enzymes that I should be looking for? Um, so we can look at the actual query here. This is define liver enzymes, a list minimum day required. Um, and in this one, it's looking for ALT and AST levels. This is running on a 3090 Ti, so it's not the fastest hardware. So I can imagine that the user experience for this is not ideal. Asking your doctor a question, then waiting 10 minutes back to get a simple response. Um, but I think the cool thing is that this is all local. So we are sacrificing speed for privacy in this case. Let me provide you a quick overview on how you can build something like this. So the first thing you're gonna need is data, and then you're gonna need somewhere to put that data. I use Postgres DB. Um, I'm running this in a Docker container, and specifically, I am using PG vector image. You wanna use this image because it already has the vector extension installed for Postgres. So now that you have your database up and running, you actually need data. So for data, I am using a combination of my Apple Health data that I get from my Apple Watch and my iPhone, along with my LabCorp data. Now, the cool thing is if you do have a health provider that uses Epic as your EHR, you can actually import your lab data into Apple Health and it makes exporting it all very easy. So in your Apple Health settings, go to export data and create an export. You're gonna get this huge XML file. It is gonna be a pretty big file. And this is all the data from your Apple Watch, your iPhone, or any other apps that write to Apple Health. Uh, I have a Python script that I'll post over on GitHub that you can use to take data out from that XML and put it into a common format. And then we load that data into a Postgres database. So if we go to Postgres over here, we can query, let's query about different type of records right here. We can see here are the different type of records that I have from my Apple Health data. For the lab data, it's a little bit more tricky. It uses uh, a Fire HL7 format. There are libraries that you can use to parse that data. I also have code to parse that HL7 data and put it into Postgres. Here are the different lab type names that I have. Um, and these from all the labs I have personally taken. So once all your data is in some database, in this case, Postgres, the next thing we wanna do is create a data dictionary. Now the data dictionary is probably the most important step outside of creating prompts for this. The data dictionary should define your columns for your database, the tables you can find them in, and information that describes the columns. Ideally, you know, business-friendly descriptions or human-friendly descriptions. We want to store this data dictionary inside of Postgres. So first we're gonna go back to Postgres and we wanna create this extension called Vector. This is so we can store the Vector embeddings. And then we're gonna create a data dictionary table. For the embedding, the Vector dimension should match the embedding model that you plan to use. So I am using a model that I'm just pulling from Olama called BGE M3. The dimensions are 1024. So I'm making sure that the vector dimensions match that. You can find this information easily on Google, but just make sure they match and create that table. Once we have that table, we're gonna store the vectors inside of that table. The important part is that we're coming down here, we're inserting the embeddings into the table. At the top, we're using Olama to create the embeddings from pretty much this text description right here. So now that we have our data in the database and we have the vector embeddings, take a look at this. Here's our vector embeddings, our ID, text, and embeddings in here, along with some metadata. We're pretty much ready to create a N8N workflow. So we go back to N8N, we go into overview. Let's just see what changes we have. We're going to create a workflow. 
our first step will be a chat because we always want it triggered on chat. Um, and then we can just keep that as default. Um, the cool thing is about chat, if you want this publicly available, you get an IP address so others can access it. Then we create an AI model, AI agent. Um, we can define the system prompt here. Let's do max iterations. I set that to like something high, like 25. And then for system message, we're going to define that in a second, but we'll keep that blank for right now. The next thing I want to do is create a chat model. Again, medical data, we want everything to stay local. So we're going to use Olama. But wait, there is currently a bug in N8N that if you try to use Olama with a tool, you're going to get some weird error. So what you actually have to do for right now is use an open AI chat model. When you edit your credentials, API key can be anything. doesn't matter. It's local. Point the base URL to your Olama instance. So I'm running Olama in a Docker container as part of a Docker network. So my base URL is Olama and then a port. If you're using a local host, just change this to local host. Um, at the time of this video, you have to do this to avoid a weird tool error of N8N. Maybe in the future, you won't have to do this. Um, once you do that, you select your model from the list. Um, one thing to point out is if you're using Olama, um, by default, they set the context window very small to like something like 2000. Um, that's going to be hard to do with RAG. You want at least 32,000 tokens if you can. Um, so within Olama, there are instructions for how you can set the context size larger. I recommend you try and follow those instructions just so you get a larger context size when you're working with this. So I'm using Quinn 32B, 32,000 context as the model. For memory, I'm just going to use for this simple project, simple memory, um, very easy. Context window, like we could create five or maybe even up it to 10. We can store the memory in a Postgres database if we want to. And remember, memory is sort of the conversation history. An LLM does not inherently have history of the conversation unless you feed it back to it. Uh, now, finally, for tools, this is where we start getting interesting. So we want a RAG tool. So first, we are going to type in Postgres. And we're going to do Postgres uh, tool. Let's see. We get this one. Actually, not that one. We go back. We want to do, let's just type in vector. Here we go. Postgres vector store. That's going to be our first tool. And we're going to retrieve documents for, um, let's see. I think we're going to do retrieve documents from here. We want to use the operation of retrieve documents um, as tool for AI agent. We're going to give the tool a name. In my case, I called it health records. And the description that tells the AI agent to use this tool um, when it needs to retrieve documents and schemas. Um, I'm going to go back to my final workflow so you can see what this is. But we want to provide a description. And then a table name is going to be where we store the vectors. So in my case, it'll be data dictionary. Um, and I'm going to say retrieve documents to, to describe schema. This is not a good description, but we're just going to put that as a placeholder for now. So we have this tool. Let's get rid of this one we don't need. You can always collect tools by clicking and dragging down here. Embeddings, once again, we're going to use Olama embeddings. Our embedding model was this one right here that we used. So now that we have some memory tools, now let's set up creating, um, let's first set up a second AI, AI agent. So we're going to call it an NAN workflow. Um, in this case, I already had the workflow set up, but I'll show you how to set that up. Um, so we're going to call our health expert. Um, and again, we're going to call this, you know, health expert as a tool. Um, we're going to give it a good description and it's going to call that workflow. We can do the same thing for any other AI agents that we want. For example, like a data converter agent. Um, so once we have that tool, let's create one more tool to execute SQL. So we're going to go back to Postgres. We're going to do a tool called, we're going to do a execute query. Um, and then we're going to pull this query from the chat history. We're going to say from AI query. Um, and that will allow it to execute the query. Obviously, we're ignoring a lot of good security practices with this project or this little um, demo. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
So now we have this workflow tool, health expert. Let's just go and create our health expert tools. Let's save this. Um, we can go back to any workflow. Here's our health expert tool. I'm just gonna use the existing one I have. The trigger in this case uh, is gonna be triggered. We can do workflow. So execute sub workflow would be the trigger for our sub agent here. Um, and we're saying it accepts, accepts all data. And this is a test data we're doing. For our health expert agent, we're giving it a prompt that tells it that it is a medical expert agent, board certified clinician, to respond back only with the required information. And with this prompt, we're attaching a model. Once again, we're only using a local Olama model, but you know, maybe this could be a model that's trained specifically on medical data. So once we have that, and we don't need to give this model any memory because it doesn't really need a memory member conversation history in our case. Um, and then maybe it could have a tool to search the web, but we're not gonna use that for now. And then we will do the same thing with the data conversion tool. So we go to our conversion agent. Our conversion agent, once again, is executed by another workflow. It's also using an Olama model. This time, this tool does have a calculator. So if you go to tools, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice tool that comes with NHN, um, and it's just a simple calculator. So let's go back to the whole entire workflow just so you can see it again. So we have once again the medical expert agent, the data converter agent. We have a, we have a tool to execute SQL queries. We also have a tool to list tables. Um, to get information schema from the database, a calculator tool, just gives this agent to do calculations, and finally a rag tool. Now, the one thing I, last thing I wanna talk about is prompts for this. So if we go over here and we go to prompts, here is my prompt for the health assistant agent. It's very elaborate and this prompt gives it a role, describes the tools that it can use and how it should use this. Um, and for example, I we always say always call the medical expert first. For health records, always call um, before writing any SQL queries. Finally, we describe a task flow for this health assistant agent. We give it some constraints, and then we say pretty much how it should respond, the style, and then some few shot prompt examples. Some few sh some few shot prompt examples. The final thing we're adding to this prompt at the bottom is additional context, the current date and time. These are placeholders from NHN, so NHN will fill in the date and time as far as the day of the week. Also, because it didn't have any demographic information in my database, I just added this so it knows this information as well. So this is the system prompt that we're using for our health assistant agent. And then even for our tools, if we go to our SQL tool, once again, we have a prompt here. I did find it helpful to provide sort of is schema information in this tool as well. Um, even though it can get this from RAG, sometimes it seems like having this data in the tool was helpful for it to build better queries. Again, this is sort of trial and error. So in your case, maybe it doesn't work as well. We provided some examples for how to do some type of query. So how to get the daily average heart rate for the past seven days, how to get AST levels and so on and so forth. Um, finally, for our uh, RAG tool, once again, we provided a pretty good description for how to use this tool. Um, so I'll provide all these prompts again as part of the GitHub. You want to take a look at how to do this as well. Uh, so as far as this whole workflow, this is pretty much it. So guys, this is my project on how to build my AI doctor to query my own medical data, answer my own medical questions. If you thought this was interesting, give this video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm knows. Let me know what you think about this comment and that. Let me know what you think about this project in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.